Now it's time to learn the R controlled vowels. These are very tricky, but very important. I'll see you shortly. There are five controlled R sounds, one for each vowel. Let's start with the first one, AR, R. For example, car, K, R, car. Good. Here are some more examples with AR. We have star, st, R, star. We also have smart, sm, R, t, smart. Good. And then we have farm, f, R, m, farm. Good. Once again, AR is R, R, R. Or ah, 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 st, ah, star, sm, art, smart, f, arm, farm. Next we have o, r, o, o, o. For example, for. This present is for you. F, o, for. Good. So o, r is o. Like in fork, f, ork, fork. Good. There's also corn, k, on, corn. And there's also sport, sp, ort, sport. Good. Next we have er, e, e. Like in her. Her, 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 her dress is yellow. Very good. Here are some more examples of er. Sister, sister. Then there is tiger. T i g e r, tiger. Good. And then we have finger, finger, e r, -e, finger. Good. Once again, er is er, 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 er. Next, we have ir, which is the same as er, 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 er. Like in stir, stir, er, stir, stirring and mixing. We also have girl, g, girl, girl, good. We have shirt. Sh, ert, shirt, good. And then bird, bird, b, erd, bird. Once again, ir is er, 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 same as er, er. Ur is also the same as er and ir, er, 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 like in turn, t. Turn, turn. We also have hurt, h, hurt, hurt. Good. And then there's surf, s, earth, surf. Good. And then turtle, t, e, t, u, turtle. Good. Once again, u, r is e, e, e. The same as er and ir. Uh, uh, uh. Now it's time to do some practice. See if you can spot the correct control r sound. Are you ready? The first one is market. Market. Can you spot the correct r sound? Market. Market. Good. M a market. A a a a. Good. Next we have. Forget, forget. Can you spot the correct R sound in forget? Good. For O, forget. O R, forget. Good. What about farmer? This one has two controlled R sounds. Can you find them both in farmer? Good. This is a tricky one. There is. F, A, Fa, M, E, M, Fa, M. 
A R and E R. Very good. What about circle? Circle. Can you spot the correct controlled R sound in circle? Good. I R C U circle. U U I R. Very good. What about burger? Burger. Can you spot the correct R sounds in burger? There's two. Good. Burger. There's U R and E R. B U G U. Burger. Very good. Now it's time to do some reading practice. See if you can read these sentences with the controlled R sound. I'll give you a moment for the first one. The purple shark burnt her fur skirt. Good. The purple shark burnt her fur skirt. Good. How was that? If you can do that, then you can try the second sentence, which is a bit harder. I'll give you a moment for this one. The tiger hurt the turtle with a hammer. Good. The tiger hurt the turtle with a hammer. Nice. That means if you can read this one, then you're ready for the third and final sentence. This is a hard one. I'll give you a moment. The short nurse waters her garden flowers. Good. The short nurse waters her garden flowers. Nice. If you can read this one, you're incredible, and it means you're ready for the review. Today we learned the five controlled R vowels. The first one is A R R R. For example, car k r car. It's also a a k a ka. Nice. Next we have o r or or, like in for for. This is for you for you. You can roll the r like in or or r r or just do a a o o. Both are fine. Next we have e r like in her her. Her, her. You can roll your tongue as much as you want. Her, her, or her, her. Both are fine. Then there's I R, like in stir, 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 stir. Both are fine. Both are rolling the R's as much as you want. Finally, there's U R, like in turn, turn, turn. Very good. Take your time to practice the controlled R vowels and see how many other words you can think of with these controlled R sounds. Take your time, practice a lot, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. Take care for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For last week's comic book Tuesday, we read Dinosaurs in Space, and now today we're reading part two. Dinosaurs in Space: Back to Earth, written by Pranus T. Norjakaitis. Let's go. Captain's log. We are in the middle of a routine mission to a distant part of space. I am so bored. There's nothing boring about exploration, Tyrone. Also, you're not the captain. Oh please! I'm totally the captain, and as the captain, I want to do something exciting. Boom! Uh oh! What was that? I think we got hit by an asteroid. Wahoo! Russ, weren't you on asteroid watching duty? Sorry, dudes. I was playing video games. Uh, did we hit something? This is why I do not like flying. Everybody, strap yourselves in. We've got to land on this planet to make repairs. Ah! Wahoo! Guess where they're landing? On planet Earth, our planet. 
Hey Joe, what are you looking at? For your information, I'm working on my stargazing badge. Aren't you supposed to be stargazing at night? My little brother is afraid of the dark. Nah, uh Oh my gosh, what? You see a UFO or something? Yeah, I do. Cough. Did a spaceship just land in your backyard? Some kids have all the luck. Hey, can you aliens tell us what planet we crash landed on? Eee, little aliens, how cute. Quiet, you. Isn't that funny? The dinosaurs think we're the aliens and we think they're the aliens. Uh, you're on Earth. I don't believe it. Our great 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 grandparents came from Earth. Dinosaurs weren't wiped out by an asteroid, but instead blasted off into space? Um, yes, actually. Ha, I knew it. Joe, you owe me a dollar. Wow, real life dinosaurs. It's the scientific find of the century. You aren't afraid of us? I mean, you're so tiny. No way, we love dinosaurs. Ooh, I think I like little aliens. Hey, we're kids. Oh, my mistake, alien kids. Howdy, I'm Tyrone. Uh, I'm Bruno. I'm Joe. Yo, name's Russ. Pleased to meet you, I'm Terry. I'm Gwen. They call me Benji. They call me Tracy. Um, I hate to end this happy little party. Oh, here comes Stuart the buzzkill. But our ship is destroyed. If we can't fix it, we'll never get back home. Hey, we could help you fix your ship. Yeah, piece of cake. Ooh, cake, yummy. Okay, so in order to fix our ship, we need three things. A communicator, energy, and an engine. All right, dudes, let's go out and grab those parts. Hey, watch where you're going. Huh? The d dino Dinosaurs! Ah! Was it something I said? It's just adults on this planet get scared by things like giant dinosaurs. Not us kids though. Hmm. Let's split up into smaller groups and stay hidden. Hey, I'm good at hiding. Bruno, we can all see you. Darn. Okay, so let's go fix up a spaceship. Ready team? Yeah! Yeah, wait, what are we doing? Groan. Okay, Bruno, Terry and Benji, you're the first team. We are going to need a brand new communicator. Huh? Hey, that looks like an old antenna. Oh my, you have TV on this planet. My favorite show is Dino Mites. But no one uses them anymore, so they are pretty hard to find. Oh dear, gotta find an old TV antenna. There's one all the way at the very top of this building. Hey Terry, just fly up and grab it. I... I can't. Sure you can, just flap your wings and fly. But I... I... I'm afraid of flying and of height too. Sob. Oh, don't worry buddy, everyone is afraid of something. I'm afraid of spiders. I'm afraid of toasters. I know what we'll do, we'll help you get over your fear. Okay, just hop and fly a little. Oh, I don't know. Flap, flap, flap. Did I die? No, you did great. Munch, munch, munch. Terry, you can do this. Oh dear. Ah, flap, flap, flap. Yay, go Terry. I, I did it. I actually flew. And now the final test. Go. You got this. Here I go. I'm falling. Don't worry, we'll save you. Hold on. Whoa, good catch, Bruno. Oof, smack. Hey, there's an antenna. I'll get it. Oh, oh my. I can see my house from here. I did it. I'm so high up and it's not so horrible. Now let's get this antenna back to the ship. Okay. Woohoo. Whoa there, belly. When was the last time we ate? Grumble. Choo choo choo. Yuck, what is that? It's freeze-dried food sticks. It's the only food we take with us on space missions. Ooh, can we try some? You be sorry. Ah, so gross. Pa-tew. Uh, you guys can't eat this stuff. I know. 
These may not taste great, but they provide all of our daily vitamins and donuts. Nom nom nom, chomp chomp, sniff sniff. Holy space cow, this is the best thing ever. I need more. No, stop, our parents will see you. Next thing we need is fuel. Russ, Tracy and Gwen, it's your turn. Has your species discovered black hole energy yet? No. Light speed? Nope. Wormhole warp? Sorry. This makes things difficult. There's got to be something on Earth we can use. Don't worry, we'll find something. Be sure to stay hidden, you two. And I'm the best at this hiding thing. Easy for you, you're small. Uh-oh, a grown-up. Hey, hey, howdy. Uh-huh. Phew, close one. This thing was just the right size for me to hide behind. Hmm, this gives me an idea. Ta-da! Phew! Maybe gas will work. Like what happens after I eat? Ew! Haha, <laughs> no, gasoline. We put it in our cars to make them go. Bleh, it smells gross. What's in it? Mmm. Well, um, it's made out of oil, which is, well, um, made out of you guys. What? Oil is fossil fuel. It's made from really old plants and dinosaur bones that have been in the ground for a really, really long time. No way we're going to use old dino bones to fuel our ship. Yuck. Jeez, your planet sure is bright. That's it. I think we've figured it out. Cheap calculators. See, they are powered by solar energy. If we put enough of these around the ship, hmm, this just might work. Let's hope it doesn't get cloudy. Whoa, pretty cool treehouse. Can I come in? I don't think you can. Sure, the more the merrier. Hey guys, party in the treehouse. Woohoo! Ooft, it's a tight fit. Hey, I'm just big boned. Your turn, Bruno. Hey, who has their tail in my face? Uh-oh. Oh great, now we have to repair a broken spaceship and a treehouse. Oops, sorry. This is going to be the toughest piece of all. Where can we find a spaceship engine? Hmm, this looks really familiar. Oh, I remember. I saw this in the newspaper last week. Mystery, fossil found. Gasp, that's it? Where is it? At the museum. Huff, huff, so many steps. Hurry up before someone sees you. Security. Huh? I think I need new glasses. Whoa, a whole building dedicated to science? Pretty cool, right? Yawn. Boring. Let's see how boring science is when it helps us fly back home. Okay, 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 sorry. We're almost there. Dude, you've got to go see a dentist. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Ask away. Our latest research shows that most dinosaurs had feathers. Where are yours? Oh, that's easy. We do have feathers, but they get itchy, so we just shave them off. Fascinating. Here we are. Eek! Gasp! Ooh, the dinosaur museum. It's, it's filled with our bones. Our bones. Oh no, I didn't even think. Oh jeez, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It was just a shock. Now let's find that engine so we don't end up on display here too. Push button to see a real life T-Rex. Don't mind if I do. Whoa, ah, shh, but the huff puff in the wall roaring. Now where is that engine? Hmm, I think we found it. Yay. Wait, if we take this, are we stealing? Well, this used to belong to my great 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 grandparents, so I'm just taking it back. Hmm, this dude looks familiar. Hey, I remember, this guy owes me five bucks. Now how do we get it out of here without setting off the alarms? You do too owe me five bucks, bonehead. Come on, don't be cheap, pay up. Ah, ooh, crash. Um, wasn't me. Guess we don't need to worry about setting off the alarm now. The bone dude did it. Run! I am not cleaning this up. <laughs> Let's make sure we got everything done. TV antenna, check. Solar powered calculators, check. Fossilized engine, 
Check. And don't forget the lunches the kids packed for us. Nom nom nom. It's time for us to blast off home now. Oh, we're really going to miss you. Yeah, you guys are so fun. Hey, maybe you can come with too. Ooh, I always wanted a pet. No way, little dude. You guys belong on Earth with your friends and family. Oh, but we want to make you honorary members of our crew. Oh wow, so cool. This is better than any stargazing badge. We'll stop by next time we're in this part of the galaxy. Fuels level charged, rockets ready, starting countdown to launch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! Vroom! Next stop, home. Okay, who has the directions? Uh oh, the end. These dinosaurs sure are goofy and funny. What do you think about this story? Let me know down below. Also, if you have any comic book ideas, let me know too, so maybe we can read it in the next week's comic book. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. In today's social studies class, we are learning about the transportation of then and now. With this book by Nadia Higgins, let's go! Chapter 1 By Foot and Water What do buses, boats and planes all have in common? They are forms of transportation. Long ago, most people travelled by foot. Many Native American tribes like these ones lived near rivers. They travelled by canoes. Today, we travel by land, water or air. How do we get around? Let's find out. This is a covered wagon. How people used to travel by land a long time ago. In the 1800s, settlers headed west. Horses or oxen pulled covered wagons. The ride was bumpy. Wheels often got stuck. One trip could take months. These old forms of transportation were very slow. Chapter 2 Steam and Electricity Along came the steam engine. This machine was more powerful than teams of horses. It made trains go as fast as cars today. By the mid-1800s, steam engine trains were full of passengers. Today, maglev trains use super strong magnets. They float above the tracks and travel at amazing speeds. Wow, that's high tech. The steam engine changed sea travel too. Sailing ships took weeks to cross the ocean, but a steamship could make the trip in days. By the late 1800s, steamships were bringing millions of immigrants to America. What do you think? In the 1800s, transportation was faster and cheaper than before. For the first time in history, ordinary people could take trips just for fun. How do you use transportation for fun today? Let me know down below. And this is an example of a steamship from the 1800s. After the steam engines came electricity. Meanwhile, inventors were experimenting with another form of power. What was it? Electricity. People in cities started riding electric street cars. These cars rolled on rails like trains. They got power from overhead wires. Soon, electric trains ran in tunnels underground. Subways were on the move. Did you know that in 1904, New York City's subway had 28 stops? Today, it has 472. Almost 6 million people ride it every day. More ways to go. By 1885, the gasoline engine powered cars. But cars were expensive. Henry Ford became mass-producing cars in factories. The price dropped. More people could afford them. And then, by the 1920s, cars were everywhere. Cars are still popular today. Self-driving cars do not even need human drivers. They use computers and sensors to get around. Look at this driver reading a book in a car. And now comes the airplanes. In 1903, the Wright brothers became the first to fly an airplane. The plane flew for less than one minute. 
and then by the 1950s planes could fly over oceans and today at any moment there are an average of 5,000 planes flying in the sky and this is the first plane of the Wright brothers in 1903 very different right by the 1970s people were on the go more than ever but cars and planes burn a lot of fuel this causes air pollution people started looking for eco-friendly ways to travel that means environmentally friendly like what cars that use less gas public transportation cuts down on travel what do you think do you ride a school bus that cuts down the amount of cars on the road how instead of many cars driving one bus carries many people what is your favorite eco-friendly way to travel let me know down below and this is what a bus looks like today and then there's the bike which are easier on earth why because they use muscle power instead of gas many cities have bike lanes some even have public bikes for sharing what other clean ways of transportation can you think of and how are they different from earlier forms let me know down below now let's take a look at how transportation has changed over time how many of these do we still use today and what other forms can you think of first came foot and then canoes and then wagons trains subways cars and then the airplane now it's your turn to tell me which transportation is your favorite share with me why down below after i'll see you in the next video for some more learning fun that's all for today see you next time bye bye now it's time to learn about the big horn sheep one of the biggest baddest animals of the desert let's go what are bighorn sheep bighorn sheep are hoofed mammals in the wild they can be found in western north america their range is between canada and mexico bighorn sheep live in the mountains they are at home in foothills and alpine meadows some bighorn sheep are found in deserts how to identify a bighorn sheep number one they have white back ends which is a white bottom they have curved horns and split hooves bighorn sheep climb and jump on steep rocky slopes split hooves help them balance the hooves have soft bottoms that grip the rocks grazing and chewing Bighorn sheep are herbivores. They eat grasses, sedges and shoots. Those in deserts feed on cactuses and woody plants. On the menu, they eat sagebrush, bear grass, rabbit brush, desert holly, prickly bear cactuses and yellow sweet clover. The sheep graze throughout the day. After they eat, they find a safe place to chew their cud. Rams, ewes and lambs. Bighorn sheep are called rams. They have long curled horns. The horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. Those are very big horns, up to 13 kilograms. This is the size of a bighorn sheep compared to an average human. Females are called ewes. They are smaller than rams and their horns are shorter and straighter. Animals to avoid include coyotes, mountain lions, grizzly bears, grey wolves, bobcats and golden eagles. A ewe gives birth to a lamb on a high cliff. There, it is safe from coyotes, mountain lions and most other predators. However, it is an easy meal for a golden eagle. Soon. The lamb joins a herd with its mum. It climbs and plays with other young sheep. The lamb finds mum to drink her milk. Baby facts. The name of babies are called lambs. Size of litter is one lamb. Length of pregnancy is five to six months. And time spent with mum is four to six months. 
Wow. Most females stay in the same herd for life. Males leave the herd after a few years. They join smaller groups of rams. Battle of the rams. In four, the largest rams fight for use. Two rams charge each other. Their horns clash together. These battles can last for hours. Now let's learn some of the words in this book. The first one is alpine meadows. These are grassy fields that are found high up in mountains. Cud is food that has been spit up to be chewed again. Ewes are female bighorn sheep. Foothills are hills at the base of the mountain. Graze means to eat grasses and other plants on the ground. Grip is to hold tightly. Herbivores are animals that only eat plants. Herd is a group of bighorn sheep. Lamb is a baby bighorn sheep. Mammals are warm-blooded animals that have backbones and feed their young milk. Humans, like us, are also mammals too. Predators are animals that hunt other animals for food. Rams are male bighorn sheep. Sedges are grassy plants that grow in wet areas. Shoots are plants that are just beginning to grow. And finally, split hooves are hooves that are split into two toes. Hooves are hard coverings that protect the feet of some animals. What do you think about the bighorn sheep? Do you think they're cool or scary? Let me know down below and also share with me what are some things you learned that are interesting about the bighorn sheep. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye bye. If you like sleeping, then this book is perfect for you. In today's science and art class, we are learning why the body needs rest with this book by Jenna Lee Gleisner. Let's go. Sleep. Have you ever gone a day without sleep? We all need sleep. It helps us feel rested. We need sleep to stay healthy. Bedtime. Young bodies need a lot of sleep. Kids should sleep 10 to 11 hours each night. Set a bedtime, go to bed at the same time each day. Healthy hint. Make your bedroom the best sleeping area. Make it cool, dark and quiet. Brain power. The brain needs sleep. Sleep helps it think and remember. Get enough sleep, this will help you think well in school. Body power. Sleep also powers the rest of the body. Your immune system keeps sickness away. Sleep helps it do its job well. Then your body can fight off a flu or a cold. How we grow. Bones grow the most during sleep. So do muscles. Your brain makes a growth hormone when you sleep. The body needs this to grow. Your body doesn't make enough if you don't sleep enough. So make sure you get enough sleep. And then the sleep stages. There are five sleep stages in total. You start to fall asleep at stage one. Stage two is a light sleep. You are fast asleep by stage three. Stage four is the deepest sleep. Healthy hint, wake up at the same time each day. This will help you sleep better. Rapid eye movement or REM sleep is stage five. Your eyes move quickly. Your brain thinks while you sleep. People dream at this stage. You go through all five stages every night. Once again, stage one is drifting off to sleep. The muscles in your body relax and you begin to fall asleep. Stage two is light sleep. Your heart starts to beat slower. Stage three is deep sleep. Your brain slows down. And then stage four is deepest sleep. It is very hard to wake up from this deep sleep. Steep walking happens in this stage. And finally, stage five is REM sleep. This is where your eyes move quickly and your brain is busy thinking. Dreaming happens in this stage. Need more sleep? Have you ever felt tired or crabby? Maybe you did not get enough sleep. 
This can put you in a bad mood. It can also make you yawn. Healthy hint, turn off TVs and games before bedtime. They give off lights and sounds. These can keep you awake. Rested up. We feel better when we are rested. We can think better at school. We have energy to think and play sports. How much sleep do you get each night? Let me know down below. I get about seven hours a day. Now here are the four words we learned in today's book. The first one is energy, which is power that can be used. The second one is growth hormone, which is a chemical that the body makes to help it grow. Then the third one is the immune system, which is the system that protects the body from sickness and infection. And finally, the fourth word is REM, rapid eye movement, which is the stage of deep sleep in which the body is completely relaxed while the brain is very active and dreaming. Now it's your turn. Why do you think sleeping is so important for our health? And how many hours do you sleep every night? Share with me down below. After, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For today's reading and comprehension, we are reading Jack and the Bean Pie by Laura North and Mike Phillips. Stay to the end for the reading and comprehension questions to see how well you understand the book. Let's go. Once upon a time, a boy named Jack lived in a tiny house with his mother. They had no money and just ate vegetables from their garden. But Jack was very good at cooking. He made delicious bean pies. One day, he took the pies to the market to sell. I'll buy your pies, said an old man, but I can only pay you with these magic beans. Jack agreed and raced home with them. Jack's mother was furious. We need gold coins, not these useless beans, she shouted. She grabbed some beans and threw them out of the window in anger. The next day, there was a huge beanstalk in the garden. The beans were magic after all. I wonder what's at the top, thought Jack. He started to climb up and up into the clouds until he found another world. There were enormous flowers, the size of trees. He saw a bee, the size of a horse. Then a voice boomed, fee fi fo fum What's that? thought Jack. The voice got louder, fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an English man. Suddenly, a huge hairy giant stood in front of Jack. He picked up Jack in one hand. Got you, the giant growled. Jack was terrified. Jack had a few magic beans left in his pocket. He threw them at the giant and hoped they were still magic. Yum, said the giant. I love beans. They taste much better than humans. Then the giant started to cry. I don't want to eat you at all, he sobbed. Big tears fell on Jack. The other giants make me eat people. What can I do? Jack felt sorry for the giant. I've got an idea, he said. I can cook great pies. Let's tell the other giants they are human pies, but really fill them with beans. Come and get your human pies, shouted Jack. That is a great idea. As the giants gobbled up the pies, Jack bravely jumped up. Surprise! The pies are full of beans, not people, he said. But this is the best pie I've ever had, roared one giant. More bean pies, they shouted. The pies were so tasty that the giants forgot about eating people. Soon, Jack became rich and famous from his bean pies. The giants never tried to eat humans again. Now it's your turn to do the reading comprehension questions. Are you ready? Let's go. Question 1. Who were the characters in the book? 
Is it the giant and the giant's mum? Or Jack, Jack's mum and the giant? Or John, Jacob, Jingleheimer, Smith? Or Jack, his sister and his giant aunt? Good! It was Jack, Jack's mum and the giant. Very nice. The next question. Where did the story take place? A. In a big city. B. It doesn't really say, but it looks like a village and another world in the sky. C. In the United States of America. Or D. Hawaii. What do you think? Good! It was B. It doesn't really say, but it looks like a village and another world in the sky. The next question is, what is the problem? A. The giant wants to eat Jack. Number two, the giant likes pies. Or number three, the other giants want the giant to eat people. Or number four, the giant is hungry. What do you think? Good. Three, the other giants want the giant to eat people. Now for the last question. Are you ready? How is the problem solved? Is it A, Jack goes to McDonald's and buys all of the giants a Big Mac? Or B, Jack gets eaten by the giants. Three, Jack makes bean pies and all of the giants love it. Or four, Jack runs away. What do you think? Good, it is three. Jack makes bean pies and all of the giants love it. How many questions did you get correct? Let me know down below. And also, please share with me what do you think about this book? And is there another fairy tale you'd like me to read next week? Let me know down below too. That's all for now and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.